A man who has helped millions of children learn their ABCs is here with us today. Mr. Roscoe Orman, commonly known as Gordon on Sesame Street. We are thrilled to have him here in the studio with us. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you. you're going from hot topics to the hot seat. Yeah, you got me all over the place now. <laughs> See, what's Absolute, next? Uh, what's well, after I don't this? know. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. <laughs> Well, now, Sesame Street, it's like an all-American product. It's like bazooka bubblegum. You say America, you say ketchup, you say Sesame Street. You know, how has Sesame Street survived for 43 years? Well, you, you're right about it being like it's an American institution. It you is. Know, it's, uh, it's, it's been around for so long, and it's now multi-generational. I mean, mm. uh, many of the uh, original watchers of the show, which began in 1969, which is, you know, that's quite a, that's 43 years of right. broadcasting. Many of those original viewers are now parents or even grandparents, some mm. of them. You know, so we're, we're talking about um, a show that is unique in that sense of ha having the, 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 the uh, succession of generations and, and parents who now uh, can watch the show with their kids and have a whole different level of appreciation and, and the joy of of actually sharing something with their children that they watch themselves as mm, children. So right. it's, it's, it's really um, uh, uh, created a, a, a unique place for itself yeah. over the years. I bet the parents are just as excited. Even when more they, excited. Oh, even more. <laughs> 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 so when they go yeah. and see you oh, in person, they're goodness. like, the kids, oh. The kids, <laughs> the kids, you know, it's, it's actually they're more excited about <laughs> Elmo, you know, uh -huh. who is more, a more recent addition as right. a character to the show than when the, um, the old, the, when their parents were watching, Elmo's been around for actually 20 some years now. So really? It yeah, it, it's hard to believe, but he's been around for a good length of time so as well. The original draw was Big Bird, though, right? Big, Wasn't he Bird, Big Bird was, was was the number one Muppet character on mm -hmm. the show from day one, and he's still on the show. Yeah. But Elmo yeah. has definitely become the superstar yeah. Of, yeah. of Sesame Street. What's yeah. it like performing with Muppets? What, what is that like? Well, it's unlike anything else that I've done or that most actors will ha ever do mm -hmm. in their, their uh, careers in terms of, you know, especially if you're a theater actor like myself where you, you, you rehearse a play and you work with a company of other actors, you, d right. you establish relationships uh, with those actors and with the characters, between the characters. And working with a Muppet means that you have to establish a relationship with this inanimate object Whilst, right. while uh, uh, in, in very plain view f to you, although not to the audience, is the puppeteer under the Muppet, who's, ho who's operating the Muppet and speaking for him. Right. So the challenge is, as the actor, not to look at the puppeteer, which is really oh. hard <laughs> yes. at first, because this is the person who's doing the talking. Mm -hmm. But once you, uh, like all of us who are on the show now, eventually st establish relationships with those Muppets, with the with the with the characters, uh -huh. then we really, it's like any, any acting. You, it's a suspension of, of disbelief where you, you are pretending that this is a real person. Mm. And actually, uh, I have a very different relationship uh, with Elmo than I do with Big Bird or Oscar the Grouch. And so we have a real sense of um, you know, chemistry. Right, you so know, you're so actually good. having a real relationship with this Muppet. Yes, right. and it's, but it's something that um, not many actors can do right away. Mm. Uh, some like like Whoopi Goldberg, Robin Williams, the comic actors who have that sense of they're almost like Muppets themselves sometimes, and they they can really go berserk and, right. and kind of and you go know be places, yeah, yeah go a lot of places. Whereas the, the traditional theater or film actor uh, is less used to doing that kind of um, you know, imagi now, imaginary now thing. Uh, yeah. Big Bird. How does Big B Bird work? Because there's no puppeteer. Well, but Big the, Bird the puppeteer is inside. The, the bird suit. He's actually, he walks, as you, as you know, the, the, the legs of Big Bird are actually the legs of the puppeteer. Oh. He's got his, his legs and feet inside of Big Bird's feet, uh -huh. you know. Uh, it's like, it, actually it's a pants outfit, and mm -hmm. then after the pants are put on, which are the legs, then the, the feathers and the head are one piece. And he operates the head like any other puppet, with his arm raised up into the, the head and the beak, he moves mm -hmm. the beak with his hand moving, and he talks. 
And is that how he turns his head too? Turns yes, his head with, with his with own with hand. Arm. Oh, okay. Now, only one of his arms, and I'm giving away some com company secrets here, <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> only the left wing is really operable in, t in terms of being able to function and pick up things and do mm -hmm. things. The right wing can move, but it can't really pick up anything. And it moves because in the head there's a string that's attached to the top of the head, uh -huh. which Carol Spinney is the name of the puppeteer. Mm -hmm. his, his, uh, his, his, his name is Carol. He actually manipulates the, the wing and can flap it with that string by moving a lever mm -hmm. in that on the on the top of the head. So it's really very complicated. It is in addition to that, his only way of of viewing, and this this is true for all the, the, the puppeteers, they see themselves or the or the character through a, mo a TV monitor that's either under under them or in the case of Carol Spinney who's wearing the, the bird mm -hmm, suit right. inside of the inside, suit. Inside so he has there a is a, a monitor strapped to his chest. Oh, so he can see where he's going. He can see where and doesn't that's bump into anything. That's the only way he can manage. <laughs> now, can you imagine having that, the camera's point of view of you being your only way of <laughs> knowing how to, how you're moving and not bumping into it? No. That's, I, it's really a phenomenal. It's a trust exercise. Oh. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> Without <laughs> a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. Okay, now, you've been on the show for how many years I now? started in 1974. In 74. Right. Okay. So... And yeah. you used to be also on All My Children at the same time. Well, All My Children was one of my moonlighting gigs that I did after the first season. Uh, uh -huh. It turned out that I was a really bad guy on All My Children, Yeah, oh, as you may have heard. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. I heard that. A guy named Tyrone, who was a lot of fun. Because, you know, most actors love playing bad guys. Because yeah. you get to do things that you would never be allowed to do in real life. You know, I mean, I'd be arrested if I did those right. things. Right. Oh, you but know. Sesame Street, what is, no, how does they that were work not with happy. Sesame Street? They were not happy. But that was my only after my first season. I didn't realize the level of responsibility it entailed in being Gordon. Right, exactly. You know, there is a whole image thing, especially when parents let their children watch a soap opera with them during the day. And, you know, the kid is saying, well, why is Gordon when beating up that person? <laughs> 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 now, you were at the White House recently? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's one of my one of my favorite perks of uh -huh. being on Sesame Street. There's lots of different special events that we do, one of them being um, the uh, White House Easter egg roll event, which happens every year. Mm -hmm. And I've done it for, what, three presidents? Uh, the Clintons, the Bushes, and now the Obamas for the third year this year. And that's really so much fun. That's I mean, great. to be out there on the White House lawn with 30,000 people, you know, who come to watch all the entertainment and, you know, and I get, get to read children's books to the kids. And That's awesome. Yeah, it's wonderful. That is awesome. Yeah. But you're doing a lot of other things. You just did Carnegie Hall. Yeah, we did a tribute to Jim Henson with uh -huh. the uh, New York Pop Symphony Orchestra and Chorus at Carnegie Hall. M my return engagement to Carnegie Hall after uh, uh, my first time 50 years ago, Ow. I was a child, yes. Yeah. I was really young. <laughs> I, but actually, I wasn't. The All City High School Chorus, I sang at Carnegie Hall. So this was a wonderful revisit to Carnegie Hall, which is you know, a pretty prestigious place and a wonderful experience. Wow. Yeah. Well, Sesame Street has done a lot to open other doors. and But you've performed on stage and screen as well? I've continued to do uh, my, my, my theater career, uh, performing uh, Broadway, off-Broadway, and regional theater all over the country. Wow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for carving well, out some time to be with my us. My pleasure. I and the Tiger. Yeah. Oh, we'll have you back again. Okay. For sure. We want to thank you for not only tuning in today, but for tuning in the entire season. We'll be back next season giving you a heads up about what's happening in the Nashville community and beyond. But remember, when you're in the eye, you know you're in the know. Closing out the eye will be TSU Forensics team member Tyler Kinlock performing an excerpt from his award-winning prose interpretation. The father-son dyad might be the most socially significant male-to-male -male relationship in a young man's life. Undoubtedly, the birth of a physically disabled child will alter this relationship significantly. In fact, according to educational psychologist Gary Hornby, argues that not only do fathers have difficulty in adapting to the physical disability, but the variety of subconscious conflicts as well. Ultimately, Hornby argues that not only do fathers 
strive for a positive involvement in his disabled son's life, but the purpose to nurture his son's masculine life. Stuck in Neutral by Terry Truman. Hey, my name is Sean McDaniels, and my life is kind of like those good news, bad news jokes, you know, the ones that you always hear. So which one do you want to hear first? Well, in the jokes, usually you hear the good news first, so here it goes. The good news is that my parents love me. But the bad news is that I'm pretty sure that my father is planning to kill me. But the good news is, however, is he be doing it out of love for me. But the bad news is that no matter how wonderful his motives may be, is that I be dead. So basically, I have cerebral palsy. When I was born, I got brain damage. A blood vessel exploded in my brain, and I can't control any of my muscles. I can't control my legs, my stomach, my arms, my fingers, my mouth, my voice, my eyes, not a one. And I remember this one time my dad came into, the, into my room and he shut the door behind him. He glanced over his shoulder and he had this desperate look on his face. Like he was desperate to find a reason, any reason not to kill me. I see the pillow in my dad's lap. He breathed slowly. Sean? Son? I love you. 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 But as I lay there, I realized that there's nothing that I can do. So I'm not afraid of death. Because maybe death is flying free. <laughs>